Hey guys, welcome to a new episode, How to Keep More Money podcast. It's your host, Bilal. On today's episode, I have a guest today. So you guys know that I've been working on a, on writing a book, right? And I've actually finished writing it. It's called How to Keep More Money Without Getting an Additional Job or Working More Hours, Broke to Six Figure Secrets. So I wrote this book uh, in April, published it on Amazon. And uh, I, what I shared my journey going from broke to six figures. And, uh, you know, I learned, you know, a couple of things, you know, going through this journey. And I wanted the same success for, uh, you know, my friends, my family, uh, the people that I know. Um, and so I, I, that's what the reason I wrote the book. Um, also I, before writing the book, you know, I wanted to actually, uh, know if the knowledge that I had, if it was effective or not. Right. So what I did is I decided to help out a friend. And what I did is, uh, basically be, while I was writing the book, I was like, let me just help out a friend. Right. And see how effective this is. And, um, so this was before even writing the book. And so what I did is like, um, I would, you know, help one of my friends, right? I would give them tips, what to focus on, what to, uh, you know, what to look at, you know, for expenses, for income and how to, you know, save money. And basically in this episode, I invited him over and I just want to share, you know, his experience, uh, how he, uh, you know, his experience about like working with me, working with the program and also like, you know, the knowledge that he got from the book. And it's just going to be a casual conversation between a friend to a friend and his experience, you know, of what he learned and, you know, um, his journey and where he's going. So welcome, Dimitri. Hey, Bilal. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, man, awesome. Yeah, dude. Thanks uh, for, I mean, just to start it off, I mean, I think you approached me about for this specific, uh, you know, the book, you were telling me you were thinking about writing a book. This was about like a year ago or so back in 2020. And, you know, it was a really exciting time. Um, it was actually right around the perfect time as well, because I was struggling with, um, I guess, keeping money <laughs> or keeping more of the money that I was making. Um, at the time, I was working like, okay, so it, it was basically around February 2020. So about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Now, 2019 into 2020, I was working minimum wage job. Um, and I was in the city in Baltimore, Maryland, and I was working as a cook and a cashier. Now, at the same time, um, I was trying to get clients for my marketing agency, which I was failing miserably at. <laughs> but um, on top of that, I had to pay rent, I had to pay for food, gas, parking, all of that. And it was very, very difficult to, I mean, in my head, if I'm working a minimum wage job, I'm like, I can barely like break even every month. How in the world am I even going to, where do I start with, first of all, compiling all this information um, with how much money is coming in, how much money is coming out? Because people... Before I get into that, actually, people think it's like they take it for granted. I think like it's so easy, like, oh, I'm going to remember whatever, all the food expenses. I'm going to remember how much money I spent on clothes and so on and gas, whatever. But when you actually start writing down these numbers, like you really don't realize how much you actually end up spending on stuff that you can just completely minimize or just completely cut out. Um, right. Because again, with your goals, you know, if you have some certain goals in your in your mind, then and some things are in the way of those goals, then you got to track those and be able to eliminate them or change them. So, right. So I really like that point you mentioned. You, you mentioned, you know, it's really hard to track your expenses. So uh, before working with me, you know, before me, like coming over and helping you out, like what is the problem that you had um, before we started working together? Well, I would say it's two. So the, the number one is my income. My income was too low for the expenses. And um, that was because of my decisions, the prior decisions that I, I didn't make. Like, it's not that I just woke up and I was like, oh, I don't have any money or whatever. It's like, it's been months coming in, you know, months beforehand, the decisions that I made that led me to be in that position in the first place. So first of all was the income that I was making. And second of all was just keeping that money and investing it. Like 
my because I, I at the time I was thinking like like an entrepreneur, like I had a very strong business mindset. So I was like, I need to invest in my business. I need to like save money. I need to do all this. But it just seemed so impossible to me because I didn't have any. At the time, I was like basically breaking even. I had like almost no money to do that with. So those were the two biggest issues. Um, and then, yeah, that's when you came like with literally the perfect timing. And you're like, hey, I'm starting this new thing. Um, and would you like me to walk you through the system? And I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I'm struggling with at the time. And yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I just want to clarify one thing. So, um, you know, I gave Dimitri a program, right? Uh, that's not available to the public yet. It's something that I created for myself. It's something that I was using to help track my expenses, my income, my spending habits, everything, right? Everything that I was using money and I was tracking it with this program that I created for myself. So uh, this is still not available publicly, uh, but I gave it to Dimitri because I wanted him to have success, right? I, I knew that if he would be able to just get this one thing, it would change his life, right? And I was teaching him also the principles of the book before I wrote it. So he had the program and he had the knowledge, you know, that I was teaching him, you know, um, you know, on Zoom calls and uh, over, you know, and explain to him, you know, what he needs to focus on, what he needs to um, uh, look at, um, how he needs to manage the money. Um, so talk, let's talk about how you initially, uh, how you initially started, you know, when you started, was it something complicated? Was it easy? So, when I initially started, it was actually very difficult for me to um, just do everything as far as recording and being on top of, you know, recording all my expenses. Um, I, I guess at the time, my, I mean, I was also younger. Um, so, I mean, not much younger, but like mentally, I wasn't as uh, mature with, you know, being, um, I don't know, on top of my expenses, I guess, even though I thought at the time I was. It's just, you can always learn new things. Um, and just, it just, it just showed me like, man, this actually takes a lot of work and a lot of like commitment to sit down every day and go through the, your finances. And it's very emotional, I would say. Um, a lot of the things that you see, a lot of the money that goes into certain places and it's just like, you know, dang, I actually spent like $400 on that in a month. Like that's crazy, you know? and then. So yeah, at the beginning, it was very difficult for me. And like the first couple of months, like I was saying, um, there were the learning curve, there is definitely a learning curve. Um, but it's so worth it, because it's just something that once you learn, it's just it, you just do it second nature. Like right now, I to the today, I just get up and I look at the computer. And I look at my expenses, and it's just second nature. I literally it's just automatic. I've automated my, my mind has like automated this process. And it's, it's like perfect. Um, but it's the beginning, yeah, it's definitely difficult. Yeah. Um, so everything so yeah. is the new habit, right? It's always like, you know, it, it seems difficult because it's new, it's unknown. Um, but when you start like putting in the expenses and they start showing you, right, like uh, what's happening with your money, uh, how powerful has that become for you? Like actually getting this knowledge of seeing where your money is being spent, how you're treating your money, and if you are actually doing a good job or not doing a good job. Like, right? We always talk about staying in the green, staying in the red, right? No, absolutely. And it's it like it's it's very like I was saying, it's very emotional because it it just there's no like sugar coating it. It's just straight up numbers. You're either in the red or you're either in the green. And if you're recording everything that's coming into your bank account and out of it, it doesn't matter what you might think, what you might think that you're doing with money or whatever preconceived notions you have about you yourself spending money. Because I feel like we lie to ourselves a lot to kind of justify, you know, like a purchase or something, you know, like, oh, whatever, like I can afford this because I have an extra whatever hundred bucks this month or whatever. But when you actually see it on paper in front of you and you see like a negative, you're like, dang, I need to change that. So <laughs> um, just seeing that, you know, especially on the, the, the specific program that you were giving me, you had it all colored and you had it all automated. So it adds up everything and you can see how much you're spending on food. 
how much you're spending on, you know, like your actual groceries or your rent or just going out, you know, every weekend or something. And at the end of the month, you're like, dang, man, like, like just for example, like the first, so the first month, cause I'm looking at it right now, the first month of February, I literally spent in food alone. I spent $161 on just food. Like that's apart from the groceries that I buy at the house. And just me seeing that it's just like 160 bucks. Like what the heck? <laughs> that's like half of one of my paychecks, you know, at the time with the minimum wage. And it's just such a necessary cost. If I'm getting groceries, why am I buying $160 worth of food in a month? Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's just the, it brings you, it, it really grounds you. It really um, disciplines you and it gets you thinking, I guess, thinking again about your finances. Awesome. So now, now that you are aware, right? Like this program allows you to build awareness now moving forward. Like, does this like allow you to make easier decisions so that your, your finances look or your, your financial health becomes, you know, a priority? That's, that's actually a really interesting question. Um, I wouldn't say it's easier. Um, I think it's, the same type of work that I have to implement it. It's just different, not that I'm, I'm, I'm just working with higher numbers or different types of numbers, if that makes sense. So this, this techniques and the strategies, I guess they do become simpler in the way, like I was saying, um, you know, I'm automating it. Like my brain is kind of getting used to the motions. Um, <clears throat> but I think after like a couple months that you do it and you get through that learning curve, it's like a muscle that you just, it's just, it's just always there. It's like riding a bike. And once you start doing it, you would, you want to continue doing it because it's you it just, you just feel so euphoric knowing that you have all your finances set up hundred percent. And if you're going to make a financial decision, you're hundred percent on top of that. And it's not just something, you know, shot in the dark. So yeah. And, and another thing that you were saying and yes, it does make, I guess, a little bit simpler making decisions today as well, because I have more money to work with. Rather, if I never even did this system, I don't even know if I would have the money to work with, you know, the, or the freedom or the flexibility to work with like a, you know, investment decision or, you know, investing my business or purchasing something like something new. So yeah, it definitely, it just builds those muscles, man. Like, you know, those right, so you're. So you're able to focus more on stuff like, you know, you like you said, you said you spent uh, like, you know, a couple of hundred dollars on food and it was a shock to you. Now, moving forward, are you able to make that adjustment and say, hey, I don't want to lose money in there. Right. Uh, like I want to be able to keep more money for my financial health. Like, is, does it allow you to prov give you that insight? Oh, absolutely. It's it's it, it's that's actually Bilal, I would say that's like the least of it. And believe it or I mean, for me personally the actual monetary aspect of the system it's it's great and it works but i would say the the part that it's not monetary has the highest return for example the food that i'm spending out i would i guess i'm saving 160 dollars a month because i'm not buying it food but i'm also not eating out so what does that mean i have to be responsible with buying groceries, making my own food, which means the food would be healthier. So it's better for my health. And I'm more conscious of that now as well. It's not just I'm saving money, but now I'm more conscious of my health. I'm more, you know, looking forward to like, I have to think ahead. I can't just, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to go out and eat food. I'm like, okay, in this week, I have to plan what I'm going to do. So it just makes me more responsible, um, you know, overall. Awesome, man. So yeah, thank you for, you know, sharing like, you know, how much of an insight that provided you. Now let's talk about, you know, some of the, um, so we started off with a very small saving goal, right? And because at that time, obviously you say you didn't have that much of a good job, you know, your, your, your business wasn't doing as, as well. So uh, let's talk about, you know, initially when we had started, right? Like how much, how much was your thinking? Like how much were you willing to save initially? Initially, in the full month, 
I could theor I could like theoretically only save fifty dollars, and those fifty dollars were the like it was just invested, um, and that was a complete shock to me. Like because I don't like I was remember I was telling you at the time I'm working minimum wage. I have to pay rent. I have to pay like anyone who's everyone anyone who's been in my position understands that they, when they work a job, they have to go full-time job, pay rent, pay for food. And especially living in the city for paying for gas and parking, it racks up. And having the ability to save even $50 was just like, <laughs> this is like amazing. Um, so yeah, that's the only, and I actually had to stick with that for about six months, just $50 for about six months. But, you know, after those six months, man, like it just starts adding up and adding up and then it starts compounding. And then, but like, again, it's more important that you build that muscle, that, 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 you know, consistency, that being disciplined with not spending all your money or not spending your whole entire paycheck every single month and keeping a little bit of it. Um, and another thing, like um, sharing a little bit from the book, like taxing yourself, you know, before you even spend all this other stuff, like, it's just, there's so many cool tips. There's just so many like helpful strategies that you can use that, man, you can literally do it working minimum wage, like no matter how much you make. Right. And it's crazy. Well, you know, what's crazy is like, we started working while the pandemic started. Actually, it was like, it was like a yes. two months before, right? It was actually like a couple months in, I believe. It was like a month or two in, Right. Right. And, it was February of 2020, so right, I don't know right. exactly when it started, but it was like right around there. Right. So we started a bit before the pandemic. So would you say like, you know, these tips that I give you, is this something that you can do outside of the pandemic or were you able to do it really well as well in the pandemic with all the crazy virus and the restrictions and oh, wow. business shutting down and people losing jobs? Dude, if anything, it was easier, honestly, because there were less businesses to open to spend money on <laughs> so that means i had more money to save um and more money to keep over at the end of the month um but no it was definitely uh yeah i would say it was easier because ex for that exact reason um and since i was in the house all day with the pandemic i didn't have anywhere to go to spend money so it was either that and spending money on amazon or something you know but I don't even have an Amazon Prime account. Like, yeah. I remember the first couple months that we were talking, I literally, I had all these accounts that I didn't even, like, like just go, just scrolling through here. I had the Spotify, I had Prime, I had Audible. Um, well, Audible, I think, came with Prime. Let's see, what else? Expense. I would get, like, this... Hello Fresh, like this food delivery thing on top of getting groceries and on top of buying food. Um, I had like this weird like business software that I didn't use. That was like, I had the LinkedIn, professional LinkedIn. That's like seven, what was that? Like 70, 80 bucks a month. Like I had all these crazy things that I'd never even used. And I just canceled all of them like instantly. <laughs> just completely canceled all of them. Right. Um, so, you know, one of the yeah. you know, one of the principles that I teach in the book is like, you know, uh, not to pay for things that you're not using, right? Only pay for stuff that's actually helping you. And, you know, a very cool tip that I give is like, look, if you have not used something in the last six months, right, and you're paying for it, that's a complete waste of money. So uh, if you haven't used it for the last six months, get rid of it. Okay, if you do need it, then get it afterwards. But for now, you want to save money, focus on that. So I'm glad that, you know, you were able to, um, you know, uh, use, uh, you know, that tip and actually implement it and make that quick decision. Because some people, you know, like, they have a fear, like, you know, like, for example, they have this expense coming up, but they have a fear if they stop doing that, then they have, they miss out on our opportunity. But, you know, you uh, switch your mindset saying, no, like I am missing out on the opportunity already because I have less money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you don't realize it until you write, you actually search and write it down and see it on paper um, because people, we forget, you know, we're, we're, absent, we're very absent-minded creatures. So 
like our attention span, it, we our focus is so shifted. Like you were saying before, it's all about focusing on, you know, just a couple simple strategies, um, and then just following, being disciplined with them. And right. Then, yeah. It just pays pays dividends. Like. Pun intended. <laughs> so you started off with, you said $50 a month. And then after six months, did you move up? Did you move down? Yes. Moved up to a hundred, a um, hundred a month. And now I'm actually, I'm about close to, uh, I would say around, depending on the month, because my income kind of fluctuates. So I kind of do, you know, if I make more on a certain month, I invest a little bit more or less. Um, right now it's about two to 300 a month that I'm, um, actively putting into one, one is my, you know, retirement and the other one is like investments and stuff. So, and then that's just after I've paid everything, like, like completely profit. So, so this month, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so far I'm in the red, but we're still in ninth. We still have about, you know, three more weeks. I'm definitely going to be like well off into the green this month because I've already paid everything. So right. that feels like amazing. <laughs> right. I'm so happy for, you know, first you start off with $50 and at that time, that's all you could do. You doubled it and then you doubled it again. So yes. um, after six months, what made you feel like, you know, you want to double it or you could double it? Well, my, um, a funny thing is the, once you start looking at the amount of money you're making, you're like, I want to make more. So it just compels you to want to make more. So when you start making more money, it's, I mean, you know, it's all about percentages. So $50 is, you know, is the same percentage of, if I make this certain amount of money, if that increases by, if it doubles, then I have to double the amount that I'm investing. So it's very calculated. I'm not over investing or under investing. I'm doing it just the right percentage from my income. And I think just being disciplined with that, just that alone, it just takes a lot of the thought out of it, you know, because you can get very easily um, kind of engrossed into this, like looking at it every day, like, you know, you can kind of get addicted to it and like, oh, I'm, and then you can get very, very, very frugal. But at that point, that's like, the exact, the exact opposite where you're not enjoying life. You're not, you know, yes, you're saving a lot of money, but at what cost? Like at what, how's your mental health? How's your social health? All of that. So I think just having a healthy balance between everything and just having like certain percentages and just a hundred percent based on the income and your net grow or your net income, just invest that amount. Right. So I, I remember like you asking me about coffee, right? You're like, oh, you know, I love drinking coffee and it's something I can't give up. Should I give it up or not? And like, do you remember what I said to you? I said, look, you need to enjoy this process, right? Like you obviously you save as much as you can, but if it's something that you really enjoy, like if you give that up, you're not going to enjoy this as much. So you make a small sacrifice, but you still, you know, put a portion of it where you can actually enjoy it. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing. I mean, and again, it's all about the, the end goal. Like we, we want to set a, you know, like kind of a roadmap. We don't want to be, you know, we, we want to have a map. We want to have a GPS. We don't want to just be looking for the location without any help. So, you know, having that roadmap to where you want to go, it's just going to help you get there. And like I said, if you have, and like you were saying too, like if you have a hundred dollars for every month, that you can spare, then it's much more worth it to enjoy, you know, the process than to save that money because mentally, you know, you got to be at a good place. This, this, this type of stuff, it all works when everything, you know, you got to have a po positive mindset towards where you're going to go. And you need to be very committed with, you know, making a change in your life, Even, no matter how small it might seem in the beginning, you just got to keep it consistent and trust me, man, it's like, like I'm just, like, I, I just, I'm literally speechless. Like I literally don't understand how at the time I could save like $50. And then now I'm looking at like my accounts and it's like, this is only going to keep getting growing and it's going to exponentially grow. And um, yeah, the, the goals that I've set 
like now, I don't, I don't, I, like I, I wouldn't even dream of having those types of goals a year ago with saving fifty dollars a month. So you know, it's all incremental, and yep, just following the process, man. Right, it's great. Right. So going back to you know, like the enjoying process, right? Like you mentioned that you know, like people are, for example, they love going out and drinking coffee. And if you want to save money, you can do it. You know, you can, like you said, you, you do it from home now, right? Um, you still enjoy the coffee right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you, you don't give up on the, you know, your, what you really enjoy, but you can, you can uh, change it to something that might be, might cost you less, you know, and you know, it, it allows you to become creative. Right. So uh, I'm glad that you were able to enjoy and, you know, be, have that creativity still there. Absolutely, man. Thank and thanks, man. It's I I I actually never thought about it that way. Um, but that's very true. Yeah, it 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 forces not forces you, but it just we just you just adapt just naturally as human. You adapt to their circumstances. If you put yourself in the environment, you know, if you can you can control your environment, put yourself in that environment, you'll adapt to it. Um, and yeah, it's a good way of putting it. Awesome. So, uh, Dimitri, like you start saving a hundred dollars, right? Um, yeah. was this like, as you start saving more and more money, like did it become easier or did it become harder to do this? Oh, it so much easier. So much easier. It, like I said, I was automating it completely. Like before I was even spending any money, like I, w- I was investing everything before, like I was paying the taxes, any of that. So, um, just like, you know, just like, you were writing in your book and how, how to, you know, follow the process. You got to tax yourself and all that. Um, yeah, man, it's just, it just got so much easier. Like right now I don't even have to, it's all automated online and I don't have to go in and change it unless, you know, my income increases and then I can invest more this month and yeah, I'll go manually do it. But, um, and even, even my, my expenses are automated. So I have like my card for rent. It's just all automatic um so yeah man it's crazy <laughs> it's like so that it's, that, it's that, so much easier now right and, and in the book I, I mentioned that as a secret number five automating stuff right so you can actually focus on other stuff and not having to repeat doing the same transaction over and over again yes. right you yes. do it one and then it does it for you so um you know in the book i talk about five secrets and you know one of the most important ones is like keeping track of your expenses then i say that you know um you need to make a decision of how much you want to save and you need to do it before you pay for expenses, right? Cause, cause, uh, what happens is you get emotional, you want to buy something, right? It, like it triggers you, you're, you're being marketed consistently to get new stuff, new features, have fun and stuff. So, um, uh, and if you don't save money before, like you'll, you'll lose it. So I set it up in a way where you get, where you get a certain income from your job, you save first, you invest it and then you pay for expenses. So how has that changed, you know, your mindset uh, in taxing yourself? And what I mean by that is saving yourself money first and then paying for for expenses. How has that changed and impacted you? So it's actually, I've completely done like a paradigm shift, like in my mind. I literally feel whenever I remember the money goes out of my account and it's invested and I buy, say, a stock or whatever i'm just retired like in, in the retirement fund it literally feels like i'm purchasing something like that's in my mind that's how how i've kind of like you know um connected with that in a way where it's just like i'm already doing that you know you know how we get emotional about buying things this is it like this is what i'm so i'm all i'm already fulfilled for the month if that makes sense so whenever i look at something like like, I don't, I don't remember the last time I bought something. Like, I don't even, I, I don't have an Amazon, since last year, I don't have an Amazon Prime account. Like, I don't buy stuff on Amazon. I had to, actually, when I was, when I purchased your book, I had to go through my girlfriend's account <laughs> to purchase your book and leave a review because <laughs> I didn't have a, an account to do it. <laughs> so, right. you know, that's, that's how I work with that, man. It's, um, and it's, it feels great because it's like I'm purchasing something that's an asset. It's going to grow. It's not something that I'm going to get, you know, lose money on and then probably not going to use it. You use it like once or twice and then never use it again. 
Uh, it's just all about value. It's just not there in my mind. You know, the value isn't worth the, the price sometimes. Right. So once again, you know, you, you, like when you're focusing on saving money, your priority changes and you become more creative, right? You're you're making coffee at home now. You're not using Prime because you're not using it as often. So um, it's really inspiring, you know, to, to see you, you know, make these changes, right? Uh, when you can start focusing on, you know, your, your primary goal is to, you know, be, you know, save money, right? Um, so before working with me and then now after working with me, what is the change that, you know, you came across? Hmm. Like the number one, like the biggest change? Well, I wouldn't just say like one thing, like, like how, how do you, what has changed before, you know, before working with me and after working with me and reading the book, uh, broke to six figure secrets, right? Like what, what, what are some of the changes that you came across, you know, from this experience? Honestly, it's the, just the overall. Okay. So I, okay. So I've, it's act, I would actually say it's one or two things. Number one would be the skill set. You allowed me to, first of all, learn and acquire these skills that are necessary for money. And the thing is, they don't, they don't teach this stuff in school. Like this stuff that you talk about, it's I've like, unless maybe you've taken like a, an accounting class, but even then, like they don't actually talk about practical, you know, money management practical investing for the everyday person, regardless of their income. You don't see that anywhere. So just acquiring that skill set is literally like, it's, it's, I would say it's, you can't put a value to it. It's, it's, you can use, I can use this for the rest of my life. And then when I, when I start making more money, the principles are the same. doesn't matter the amount of money that I'm working with, but if you start out with a little bit of money and you can match, start managing that, the money will eventually grow. Like if you know how you manage your money, the money's just going to grow. So as you're, you'll grow with it and then the skill sets are just going to get better and better and better. So yeah, yeah man, you just acquiring those skills. Um, and then number two is just the discipline. Um, you allowed me to really kind of, you know, sit down and, get disciplined with my finances because I was very, I used to be very aloof with my money. Like I was just like, you know, I wasn't like spending it all like paycheck to paycheck, but I was just more like, ah, you know, whatever purchase here, purchase there. I'm not really thinking about this. Like, Oh, it's just another credit card swipe. You know, I'm sure a lot of people have that kind of mindset where it's just like, you know, just swiping the credit card, swiping the credit card. Um, so you know, you know, it's just the discipline and you're just very conscious of, you know, what you're doing and just living in that moment, living in that realization. It's about, I think that alone as well has helped me a lot. So that's the two biggest differences. That's really cool, man. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, so like, um, uh, before, you know, like working together, right? Like, uh, did you get a chance to try other stuff and, what did you see that was different trying other stuff and then working with me and reading the book and ap applying the principles? Like what was, what was the difference that happened in, into your life working or using other stuff and then working with me? So there, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, Dave Ramsey. He's, um, he has like a YouTube channel. He's all about like no debt, no debt, you know, cash, cash, all that. Like don't buy a house. He's pretty funny. But, um, he has like this seven steps to what's it called financial university or something um, freedom university. Anyway, he has this program. It's like a seven step process. And um, you know, it's like, it's, it's, I would say it's um, you know, it's pretty good. And the thing is he specializes in paying off your debt and how to pay off like student loans. If you have like $100,000 in student loans and you make $40,000 a year, how do you pay off all that debt or whatever? And just how to make like these decisions. Um, the only issue with that was I felt like the demographic was a little too high for me because a lot of the people that he brings on, a lot of the, like the majority or the majority of people that 
the success stories and all that. It's people that are established. They usually have a family. They're, you know, in their like late twenties and in their thirties and plus. Um, and these people are, they have like hundred thousand dollars in debt, you know, like that's crazy the amount of money. And they're making like 60, 70,000 a year. And I'm not making that 67,000 a year. So I didn't really relate or resonate with that a lot. So I did look, to, I, look I did look into it, but it's just that actionable, that action, that first decision wasn't there for me for, with that because of that, you know, the gap. So yeah, man, when you approached me, you like, you specifically told me exactly what I was having an issue with. And at the time, like I said, I was working minimum wage. I wasn't, I didn't have a hundred thousand dollars in debt. You know, I, I was in debt, but not a hundred thousand dollars. So I needed something for this, the, the, the basics. And that's what you provided, man. So, yeah, that's why I went, that's why I chose that. It just awesome. resonated with me directly. Awesome. So, uh, you know, you also, you know, got a copy of the book, but you also got two other copies to give to your friends, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yes. uh, like when you were reading the book, the first you read, you read like the rough draft, right? Why is it that you wanted to get the physical copy? And why did you feel like it was important for you to give it to someone, you know, like your family, you know, someone that you really cared about? Why did you feel like this book was going to be super helpful to them? Okay. So first of all, the, um, the physical copy, this it's I mean, it's personal preference, but just having a physical copy of a book in my hands that I can reference at any point, like, it's just, I think it's just very, very important for anything. It, it could be finances. It could be whatever. Like, for example, if I'm dealing with something that has to do with finances, I got the book right here. I can go to the table of contents and the way that it's set up, I can go to a specific, like literally a specific situation that I can get help on. So, you know, for example, like how, do I, for example, I have like a hundred dollars, whatever I want to invest. How do, how do I invest with confidence? Like, hmm, let me go see what that's about. And I can turn to that page and then read what that's all about and then get to get to that. But obviously, I mean, if you read through the whole book, you forget a lot of stuff too. Um, you know, just the small intricacies or small skill sets that you need to work with. So it's a good reference point. Um, and then your, your other question with giving it to uh, my friends and my family, dude, no one knows how to manage their money. Like after reading this, it's just like, I didn't know how to manage my money. And I thought I did, you know, being in business, whatever. But man, people just do not know how to manage their money. Um, and I think that it helps like, I mean, my brother and my other friend, my other friend, he's been investing because of the book. He's been reading it and he's like very confident in actually investing in the stock market. So he got his own like trading account um, and he puts like a majority of his, because he, he, he lives with his parents. So, so he doesn't have any rent or anything. So he puts his majority of his income into stocks like already. So, and he wouldn't have done that if he, didn't know the skill set or how to do that or how to start doing that and all that. Um, then my brother, the first couple of weeks to the month, he saved like two thousand plus dollars. Like, like he was spending that, and he read the book, and now he's saving that. That's just crazy to me. Like, <laughs> he's working at a different level with income, of course. But, I mean, how how do you go about? spending that amount of money right without realizing it and it just goes to show like it's just it just happens and it's more common than you think um so yeah just me sharing them this, the knowledge the book i think is going to help them get the skills to better themselves in life like i've seen them be happier people i've seen them be more confident with their money and just more on top of everything like more on top of their businesses more on top of their jobs their relationships it just having having that mindset you know, man, it's just, it pays so much more in other way areas that you don't even realize. So it's, it's amazing. Good stuff, man.
So it <laughs> sounds like a, a good uh, return on investment, right? You make a small. Oh my God. It's, it's not even a question about, are you going to get a return on investment? It's how much are, how much are you going to go? Like how, how, what's your vision? What's your goals, right? Like where, where is your mind at? Like, are you dreaming big? If you're thinking, are you going to think big? Are you thinking smaller? And it's suitable. It's so flexible. It can work for anyone. But I, like if it can work for someone who started a minimum wage job, who can save $50 a freaking month, like it can work for anything from that and up. So, and I mean, you, you have uh, little handouts and stuff that you do that you can literally start investing with like one penny, like, like you can literally start with one penny and anyone can, you can just go out to the street and pick up a penny and you can start investing that. And that small step you are literally like that. That's that's like half of the freaking battle. Just keep taking that small step. It's like crazy. <laughs> right, you're gonna pick up pennies and we're gonna recycle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think about how much like how much change do you have? Like, oh, I'm broke. Okay, well, how much change do you have like laying around in your couches and your car? Like, you probably have a couple bucks, like five dollars, dude. Just take that money to the bank. And just put it in an investing account. Right. Like it's just so much. It's just. It, it, I mean, it's just the action and the mindset to do it. It just just pays. So, yeah, man, right. it's, good, it's good stuff. Right. So initially, you know, you invested in, in in working with me, and you bought the book. Um. So within a year or within like two years, you know, that you've been doing this. Uh. Yeah. So your return on investment, right? Like. Uh, you started off with fifty dollars. You moved to hundred. Now you moved to two hundred. Um, so uh, you, obviously, you got your return on investment. From now, where do you think it, this is going to take you? What life changing stuff has this uh, impacted you with, and what are you going to focus on in the future? Okay, so um, I have an extremely specific, uh, actually, roadmap for this. So I would never have done this, first of all, without knowing the numbers so you need you need da data so like for example um i run google ads for my for my business you if you just go in the, and you just write an advertisement and you just throw money at it without doing any research or without having data to back up your your you know projected earnings you know you're it's just another shot in the dark you have no idea where you're going to go but if you go and look at the historical data and you look at what's trending and you look at how whatever's growing at what rate, you can do the same exact thing with finances over every single month. So if I go back and I look at all the historical data and I see how it's growing, I can predict how where it's going to go for a year from now. So a year from now, I, I am so, 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 so confident, like hands down, I'll easily have $100,000 saved up. I'll reach that six figure mark easily. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm. I mean, I even think I can do it in six months at this rate. Um, but in the next year, it's easily. But the goal isn't saving that, Bilal. It's the one of the most craziest things that you teach in the book. And I don't know, you, you, you mind me sharing this? Yeah, go for it, man. Okay. It's <laughs> having your investments pay for your expenses. So um, now you asked me how, where I'm going in the future. Well, I'm moving to a location where I'm going to be saving about $450 a month. So my income is going to increase because where I'm, where I'm going to move, I'm going to be able to get more clients and I'm going to have more help for my business. And I'm literally going to be lowering my expenses by $450, like overall. So my income's going up, my expenses are going down. And on top of that, if I can get $100,000 into my uh, savings account, it pays 7% interest every single year, which means that seven grand, that pays for my entire year's worth of rent. Because my rent is, seven, is actually 6,500 for the year. So if I can get to 100 grand, I can literally pay off my rent and I will literally never have to worry about the rent because it's just going to be paid off 
because every single, it pays off a dividend, like every month, it pays it off monthly. So every single month, I can literally pay off my rent if I can get to that 100K and I'm more than confident I can do it. And mark my words, this is, mark the date. Today is the, the, uh, the ninth. Mark the date, dude. Next year, I'm going to have it. I'm telling you. <laughs> awesome, man. So, so it, it's super it's inspiring to see you know, make these <laughs> targets for yourself. You know, like um, before you were just saving $50 a month, right? But it, it was a, at least a start. Now, like you doubled it, you know, within six months, then you doubled it again. And now you're even, even higher, right? Because you're able to focus on it. Yes. So. I'm super happy, you know, that, you know, I was able to help you, but, you know, like I was obviously able to give you this knowledge, but, you know, you had to do the work, right? You took action. So it does take that portion as well, right? Like I can give you as much knowledge. I can coach you as much, but you have to take the action. And I can see now you're taking ownership of your own life, right? Like you're taking um, and building what, what requires you to have freedom, what requires you to have be in rent free. And you know what that target is. So now you have more confidence in terms of taking more action. So if you need to move to a new city and save rent, now you're willing to do it before you weren't even thinking of moving, right? Before- not even, not even a not even a thought, man. Not even a thought. You right. and uh, see, I'm sorry, and sorry to cut you off. Yeah, go man. for it, man. Like you were saying, like, like it gets you create, like it gets you th- your mind thinking. Like, like who would have thought? Like, f- like now that I'm thinking back, it's like, how did I live my life? Like, how did I not see the fact that I'm paying like an extra four hundred dollars, and it's just like I could literally just move. And then save this money. Like how much how much money would I, I could have saved over a year if I would have made the decision a year ago? You know, like that. I'm thinking about these things, and it's just like, how did I live my life? <laughs> it's like, and I mean, and yeah, dude, like dude, it's so, 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 so important. Like a, like I said, it, it the skill set that you learn is is only a, it only works if you have the second part which is the discipline and the actual work to do it because you can have the, all the skills in the world. Like I could be the best musician. I could be the best film writer whatever. But if I'm just sitting here and just, you know, saying I'm the best, whatever, and I'm actually going out and applying those skills and like making a change or whatever, it's, you know, I'm just lost in the history. So, you know, in this case, yeah, you get, you learn the skills, there's a learning curve and then, you just staying consistent and dude it's it's like you you spend about through two couple months which is the hard work quote unquote hard work like looking back it's it's just this muscle that you just got to build that's just weak you know like if you don't work hard your bicep muscles you know you try and go lift 50 pounds and try to curl you you have to work up to that but you know if you start working out like 20 pounds is going to be really really easy this is the same thing so at this point, I don't even feel like it's work. It's like I said, it's just automated. So, but yeah, yeah, you definitely got to be disciplined enough to, you know, get that muscle. And then after that, it's just second nature. Awesome, man. So, you know, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to help you in the journey. Uh, I know I hope for you much more success. This is just the beginning for you, I know. Uh, you know, and yeah, I'm glad that, you know, uh, I was able to help you, you know, taking that initial step, and, you know, having the confidence in me, uh, but actually, you know, reading the, reading the, the, the knowledge in the book and actually going through and making a commitment to change your life. So once again, you know, thank you for sharing all of that. And yeah, I'm, I'm just thankful that, you know, this actually helped you. And I need to be thanking you because... <clears throat> It's like, man, it's just, this is such a necessary thing that people need to know. Like, this needs to be taught in schools. Like, this needs to be like a universal, like, law. Like, it's just, it's just money dictates our everyday lives. No matter how much you want to say it doesn't, you know, it's just whatever. Like, you need money to survive in today's economy, in today's market, world, whatever. And, you know, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be like, you know, living paycheck to paycheck all the time. Because even if you are living paycheck to paycheck, this is something that you can, this is not something, this is something you need. 
because that is the economy is affecting the people that are making less and taxes and all the fees and everything. Actually, if you're poor, you end up spending more money. So if you know, you, the more research you do, the more you start learning about money and the more comfortable you get with talking about it, you know, the more control you have over your life and the more control you have over your future and where it's going to go. You know, it's not just, it's very predictable. You know, I'm going to do this. Um, if I follow these steps and I follow on this path, I'm going to get there. So, so yeah, man, dude, thanks a lot for everything. I look forward to following this and dude, Next year, I'm telling you to this this time next year, I'm gonna get that hundred k. I definitely, man. So yeah, I, I can't wait to you know to talk to you again and ask you your your progress. Uh, but it's about measuring every month, right? Like staying in the green is like being able to save money, not being able, uh, uh, not saving money is being in the red. So I'm glad that you're still being able to focus on that. If you guys do want to grab a copy of the book, it is available on Amazon, Broke the Six Figure Secrets, How to Keep More Money Without Working an Additional Job or Working More Hours. So um, yeah, that's it for the episode, guys. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram, reach out to me on Facebook. Um, and yeah, it will help you as well. So Dimitri, thank you once again for sharing your story, where you were, where you've been and where you're going. So I can't wait to talk to you next time and ask you, you know, how you're doing. Awesome. Bilal. Thanks again. Have a good one. All right, guys. So that's the end of the episode where we're going to cut, uh, <laughs> how to keep more money podcast. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one.